In this particular lecture, let's learn how we could render a list of objects in React. So in the previous lecture, we have already rendered this particular list right here, but now let's take something complex. So let's say along with the name of the fruit, we also want to have the price and an emoji for each of the fruit which we have. So we cannot have a simple array of strings like that. Instead, we actually have to create an array of objects. So let's go ahead and let's comment this fruits array out here. And let's go ahead and let's create a new fruits array. So const fruits equals, and this is going to be an array, but here instead of having a single string like apple, uh, here we actually want to create an array of objects. So here we will have one single object for apple, another object for mango, for banana, so on and so forth. So let's create our very first object here. So let's have the name for that object as apple. Let's give a comma along with it. Let's say every fruit which we will have here is going to have a price as well. So let's say the price is going to be $10. This is an integer. And now let's also have an emoji for each fruit. So emoji is going to be, uh, let's say for apple, let's search for the apple emoji here. So apple and let's use apple here. All right. So once we have this object, uh, let's save this. And as soon as I save that, Prettier is going to auto format that for us. So one thing which you could do here is that you could kind of include this entire object in one line to keep things simple. So let's format it in one single line over here like that. And similar to this, uh, let's create other objects as well. So I'll copy this, paste it here for banana, mango, orange, and let's say pineapple. So let's simply change the names here, like mango. This is going to be banana. This is going to be orange. And let's take the final fruit to be pineapple. Now let's set the prices for these individual fruits as well. So let's say mango is $7, banana is let's say $2, orange is $5, and pineapple is let's say $8. Let's change the emojis over here as well. So let me add an emoji for mango, or let me add an emoji for banana. Let me also add an emoji for orange. So orange, which is this one, and let me finally add an emoji for pineapple. All right, so here we have a complex array of objects and now let's learn how we could render that. So right now we are rendering fruits here. So we have fruits and we are rendering every single fruit from it. However, if I go back over here, you'll get an error which says that uh, you cannot basically go ahead and render objects. So it says objects are not valid as React Child. So what's happening here is that we are actually looping through the fruits array, but now every fruit which we have here is an object instead of a simple string. So now in order to access the properties of that particular object, I have to say fruit.name, fruit.price, and fruit.emoji. So let's do that here. So I could say fruit.name. After that, uh, let's say fruit.price, and let's include the emoji at the very beginning. So over here, I would say fruit dot emoji. If I save this and if I go back here, as you can see, now we have a list of fruits here. And also right before the price, you could include a dollar sign as well, which is going to define that this is the price of the fruit. Now, if I hit refresh, it still says that uh, this key should be different. So over here, I need to say fruit dot name. All right, so this gets rendered. But now let me explain you the logic which we use here. So what we will do here is that to kind of learn how to write the syntax, let me delete this one more time and let's go through the logic one by one. So let's start with the plain simple div like that. All right. So here, as we want to render a list of fruits over here, I would first include a unordered list tag. So there's nothing new in there. We do this all the time in HTML. All right. So now, here we want to render a list of fruits and for that we have to use a map function on fruits. So in order to use that map function, first of all, we have to write a JavaScript in there. So in order to write JavaScript in JSX, we make use of this syntax, which is the curly brackets. So over here, I would say, take the fruits array, which we have up over here, and then 
I want to loop through every single fruit. So I would say fruit dot map and then these parentheses which we have they actually belong to this map function. So in this map function we are actually able to access a callback function. So that callback function returns every single fruit object which we have. So here I would say fruit and then I would write a callback function like that. And after writing this callback function, I actually have to write or create an HTML tag in here. So here in order to create that HTML tag of list element, I would say li close this. And as soon as I do that, now we have an li tag here. And in this particular li tag, I could now have access to the fruit which I have. So I could say fruit. However, this is not going to work here and that's because this fruit here is an object. So here I would say fruit.name, save this. If I go back here, now I get name of all the fruits listed up over here. And I'll get an error which says that the key prop is not defined. So to this particular list item, I would say that the key is also going to be equal to fruit.name. So I use curly bracket one more time because we actually want to write JavaScript in there. All right, so if I do that, that error disappears. And in a similar fashion, I could also get access to the emoji over here as well. So I'll again use the JavaScript code here. So fruit dot emoji. And then up over here, I could say fruit dot price. And now over here, I could simply add a dollar sign as we could include any kind of text inside an li tag in regular HTML. And Prettier is automatically adding this code for us over here, but we don't want that. So if I save this, if I go back here, now you'll be able to see that we have a list of fruits along with their emojis, the names and the prices. So that's it for this lecture. And I hope this kind of gives you an idea about how to render an array of objects in a React component. So there's one more thing which we could do here. And that is, if you take a look at this, we are actually looping through the fruits and we are actually rendering every single fruit as a list item. But what if we could create a fruit component itself? Wouldn't that be great? So in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's learn how we could create a fruit component and then rather than rendering a list item, how we could render multiple fruit components here inside this loop. So let's learn how exactly we could do that in the next one.